Let's now take a quick look at Google Cloud. There's two things that I want to check out, and Jen is here to tell us all about them. Hi, Jen. Hi, Timothy. So what's this? Because I really want to play with it. So this is Kubernetes Wackapod, and it is a demo in which you battle Kubernetes, uh, where you are trying to take down a service by being the cast monkey. While you're doing that, Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration framework, an open source project, will try and keep your web service up. That sounds like fun. I'm going to totally try and take it down. Yeah, give it a spin. I'm going to hit the button and you're going to battle for 30 seconds. Ready? Here you go. So you're doing great. Kubernetes bringing those containers right back up. And the yellow mole is special. It'll take out the entire web app in one go. Oh, and it's down, but Kubernetes is already bringing those containers right back up. You're doing great. Four, three, two, one, and you are done. So during your 30 second battle, you took out 58 sir, uh, pods and caused nine seconds of downtime. But it seems Kubernetes was victorious and getting about 70% uptime. But it's still a very good, very good attempt. Awesome, that was a lot of fun. I love that demo. All right, so uh, I'd also like to check out Spanner, because I think Spanner is like one of the coolest things ever created. Spanner is pretty amazing. So I, I, I want to check out what this visualization is. Maybe you can give us a quick rundown of what Spanner is and then tell us what's happening here. Sure. So Spanner is a managed SQL database. Um, what makes it special is it is massively horizontally scalable and can handle huge amounts of traffic and you still have the, the wonderful features you would expect from a SQL database, like queries and transactions and uh, other neat, shiny things like live migrations. Um, yeah, and it's fully managed, which is pretty cool, because who, who likes managing your own database? This is a, a, a view of the schema that is uh, uh, an example schema on Spanner, which is the same thing being used to power the demo on the screen next to us. Now, if I can, I think one of the things that I've always really liked about Spanner is the fact that uh, it, it stays in sync even though things are happening in different data centers. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's a great point. That's one of the, the special features of Spanner. Spanner, um, in, this, in this particular demo, we have Spanner running on three different data centers on three different continents all over the world, and yet, due to some magic involving atomic clocks and very precise timekeeping, we can still serialize all those transactions and maintain that consistency. That's cool. So what, what is actually happening on the screen here? So on this screen right here, we are simulating a pretty amazing ticket sales event, where apparently, uh, whatever this ticket sales event is, we are selling 137,000 tickets every minute. Um, and so far, this demo, which I believe we started this morning, has sold 238 million tickets uh, during its run through. Um, you can see that they're distributed across the world, and uh, even despite uh, all that really high throughput, we're still maintaining about a second of latency on those transactions. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about what's happening here at I.O.? Uh, it's a great show, but other than that, I think you found the fun spots. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, thanks so much, Timothy. See you later. <laughs> okay. See ya. I'll be honest. It's not a party if there's not a photo booth. So I found the photo booth, and the guy who built the photo booth, Alex, is going to tell us all about it. Hey, guys. Uh, so this is a talking photo booth. Uh, for an operating system, it uses Android things. And uh, you talk to it using the Google Assistant, and it uploads photos to the cloud using Firebase. Awesome. So Should we try it out? Yeah, let's do this. Where does it talk out of there? What about the speaker? Okay. Okay, Google, let me talk to the I.O. photo booth. Sure, here's I.O. photo booth. Hi, I'm the I.O. photo booth. Okay, taking a picture. Three, two. Don't look so serious. You're in a talking photo booth. One. Do you like it? Yes. Yes. Do you like the style for your photo? Yes. Just a minute. Downloading style.
That's 56K, I can tell. Here you go. I'm uploading your photo now. Can I share this on my Twitter too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Uploading your photo. Printing a link in the photo now. Don't forget to share your photo with hashtag IO17 and have a great time at IO. That was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks, Alex. Hey, look at us. All right, so I'm here with Doug from Firebase, and there's a lot going on in the Firebase area, a lot that developers have already been able to play with and like know pretty well, but there's also some new stuff, and I've asked Doug to show us some of that new stuff. Yeah, so uh, announced today, uh, actually yesterday at uh, Keynote, we found out that Firebase now has Firebase Performance Monitoring, which is a set of tools you can use to measure and monitor the performance of your app, so let's take a look at that. All right, so this is the dashboard. Uh, what we have here is an overview of the performance of your app. So we have traces by frequency. You can think of a trace like a window of time that's of interest in your app. Uh, also, we can look at the latency of your network connections all over the world. We can also see the uh, success rate of your app over time. So it looks like things are getting a little bit worse for this app as time goes on. So that might be something to pay attention to. Now, if we drill into traces a little bit, we can see that uh, there are a collection of automatic traces, so we capture these for free uh, automatically, and here's some custom traces that have been defined by the app. So uh, you have the flexibility to write code to get some performance, or you can just let it do, uh, do things automatically. Now, if we go to network requests, we can get a breakdown of all the HTTP uh, transactions that are going in here, and you'll notice that there's some wildcards, so we're actually bundling up different kinds of requests that look the same, but actually have like different parameters. And you can see for this set of uh, APIs, what's the average response time, what's the success rate, and the number of requests that have gone through the system. You can click through to this and see uh, how it's going. So, you know, you're probably using a lot of different SDKs. You probably want to know how they perform. You probably want to know how the app is performing from your user's point of view. And this is a great tool to get that done. Awesome, Doug. That's really cool. And it's really neat to see all the data in this way. Yeah, no, it's definitely very helpful. Um, it's definitely also very interactive. It's not just a dashboard that you look at, it's a dashboard that you interact with. So. That's actually one of the really cool parts about being at I.O. is that if I were just to set this up on my app right away, I might not have all this data right away. But we're showing a demo here where we've collected a bunch of that data so you can see what it's like once you've invested for a while. Yeah, definitely. There's nothing worse than opening up a dashboard and having nothing staring you in the <laughs> face, right? You want, it's nice to be able to see what you're getting into before you actually get into it. Absolutely.